If you ask a BJP worker why their party got less than a majority in the general elections, one of their top explanations will be the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh problem with their party. For all those of you who don't remember, here's a quick recap. In the run-up to the general elections across seven phases, alarm bells started ringing in the ruling party when there was a significant drop in voter turnouts. The word that went out was that the RSS wasn't doing what it usually does, spread the good word through their dedicated workers on the ground. This was a theory, but it became official when the BJP party president JP Nadda in an interview said, and I quote, In the beginning, we would have been less capable, smaller and needed the RSS. Today, we have grown and we are capable. The BJP runs itself. So when the BJP got 60 seats less than 2019 and 30 less than the halfway mark, many blamed it on the seeming arrogance of the party leading to an unhappy relationship with the ideological fountainhead that is the RSS. Cut to four months later and assembly elections. The big story now is how the RSS seems to be back. Consider this, they've already begun holding meetings in small groups called drawing room meetings in their own communities in Maharashtra. They plan to have about 60,000 of them across the state and you may think there is a huge number and cannot be so. After all, a big leader with all their resources can only hold at most 50 meetings. But these aren't like those. These closed door meetings have 8 or 10 or 15 people listening where the RSS worker, say in a village or small town, calls some people in his own locality or visits some others that he may know to talk about the need for continuity or national interest. They claim they never tell people to vote for any party, but they back what the BJP stands for. So why are these drawing room meetings great news for the BJP? It's because these very same meetings in Haryana led to a complete overturn in the outcome. In a state significantly smaller than Maharashtra, they held about 20,000 of these meetings, which the BJP now believes went a long way in convincing voters that BJP were worth sticking with. It's old school election work. Someone you know, that is the local RSS worker, telling you why you need to vote a certain way. It's an effective mode that has worked for the BJP election after election and is also credited with getting them 48 of the 90 seats in Haryana this time. On record, the RSS will tell you they aren't doing anything new. When I spoke to their spokesperson Sunil Ambekar, he said, the Sang always works for Lok Jagran, that is people's awareness, and will continue to do so. But for the BJP, which fell behind the Congress by going down by 14 seats and winning only 9 in Maharashtra, it is a huge assurance and moral booster. The Sang also works in a different way from the party worker. Take, for instance, this story narrated to me by a former office bearer. Apparently, during the Andhra Pradesh polls in 2019, a BJP leader asked two of his party men to help organize a rally. The two party men said that that they would get 5,000 strong crowd, but at 300 rupees per head for refreshments and travel. It would cost them 15 lakhs to organize. The BJP leader then at a meeting with RSS workers asked what they could contribute for this rally. The RSS functionary told him that he would get a crowd of 7,580. Yeah, very, very specific number. And that there would be no costs involved. In other words, the RSS worker is self-motivated and is adept at organizational work. The BJP worker may get complacent after 10 years in power, but the RSS worker isn't out looking for power in return for their work. Another key difference is that the BJP now relies heavily on external agencies like Association of Billion Minds or ABM. They employ modern tools to analyze data, trends and voter behavior which are very effective, although very expensive. However, the human intelligence and feedback that the RSS worker provides isn't matched by the people employed by agencies. As one leader told me, in Rajasthan, the agency had employed college kids and bikes to get booth level feedback. In some cases, these kids would just go on their bikes for an hour or so, talk to a couple of people and file that as ground feedback. The poor booth worker who works all day went unheard and unappreciated. 
And I guess this was reflected in the results in Rajasthan, where the BJP was down 10 seats out of 25 in the Lok Sabha elections. There's one key aspect to all this. What brought back the RSS enthusiasm? One theory that insiders float is that they saw what happened when the BJP loses an election and a state. In Karnataka, the Sangh and their workers feel that the Congress government has been vindictive, rescinding land allotments, appointments at various levels and initiating probes against them. They concluded that this was worse than working with the so-called increased arrogance of the BJP, which may not give as much importance to the Sangh as they desired, but wasn't out to harm them. And so in a very challenging election, the BJP has finally got their secret weapon back. The question now is, will they take all the feedback, especially in choosing candidates? That will be the final factor in how well the party fares.